for opening your house to everyone here. I'd like to thank everybody for showing up this evening. I'd like to introduce Congressman Ben Raven Han, Northern New Mexico champion. He's uh, the last time I spent time with Congressman Luhan, we were shooting baskets at the gymnasium, <laughs> using up p &M's power. Since then, we're generating our own power. Mm. At Tezuki Pueblo, we're one of the first small communities here in, in New Mexico to uh, complete an air emissions inventory. And this was back in the early 1990s. And so, ever since then, we've been collecting data as to what the problem is. However, the, count, the tribal council at Tezuki Pueblo opted to do something about it since the 90s. And what we've been doing is we've been teaching young men and women on an international level during these permaculture courses of what's really going on around the world. We have empower these young men and women to be young warriors and warriorettes for Earth Mom to make change. I'm happy to see everyone here to see that we care for Earth Mom and like Mariel stated what we're doing here is for the young kids. We're only here a short time, but we're only here for our kids. I know of people that have, have passed on doing the fight that we're doing here. Not just here in New Mexico or in the United States, but internationally. I've seen kids gasping for air. I've, I've sat in the hospitals in Utah when, when they would open up the, the smokestacks and see how many people would start going into the hospital with, with respiratory issues. How many of you like to go out fishing? How many of you like going out into the, into the mountains? Well, a long time ago, Federal government would not say that that these uh, power plants, coal-fired power plants, were the main cause of our mercury-laden rivers and lakes here in New Mexico. When we did our water quality testing, we were always thinking, "Well, this is," a, and what we were at that time, what we were told was mercury was, was byproduct of the granites here in the mountains. Over the years, over the years, continue gathering the data, seeing what's happening. Finally, finally, the blame was put on these coal-fired power plants. I grew up here in these mountains. I see these evergreen trees. They're tops. There's no tops on them. Every time it rains, we're happy that it rains, but it's also creating a problem for us. It's killing our forests. I would go fishing with my parents. My mom was an avid fisherman, fisher person. <laughs> and then to see the signs and warnings for women, be careful, do not eat the fish. You know, we didn't grow up that way, a lot of us here, but our young people, our young kids within our communities, they have to watch what they're consuming from going out here in nature. We, one of the good things about water uh, here in New Mexico is we have water quality standards also. I've also been to the, into the east along some of those rivers where people will walk up to the river and start breaking out in hides. 
Do we want that for our people here in New Mexico? No. That's why we need to change. We need to be the voices for Earth Mom and walk the talk. Thank you. We have an award that I'm going to present to you, Mr. Lehan, just look up here. One of the things that I've been dealing with is climate change issues. Growing up here in the winter time, I'd be walking up here and I'd fall into six feet over my head. Now I go up there, the snow's up to my ankles. And we look at from down here in Santa Fe or from Kazuki and we see, oh, we've got a good snowpack, but when we go up there, uh uh. This young man right here, I'm very happy to say, has, has stood up and acknowledged that there is a change in the climate. <clears throat> We've got climate crisis, okay? And we have an award from Congressman Luhan. Sharing solar with the young and old in my community is key to our survival. Making something old and new again with new energy technology without the negative impacts, now that resonates with our values. I would love to see our whole community <coughs> on infinite renewable energy. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. It's so much full award. Thank you so much. Um, how about another hand for Mariel and the work that she's been doing? So many of other friends that are here today are tireless advocates when it comes to speaking up and standing up for what's right. Um, I had the honor of meeting two young ladies today that I'd actually like to somehow invite to the Congress because <laughs> what I appreciate is, Lieutenant Governor, when you would say that here's a member of Congress who recognizes that climate change is real and global warming is happening, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal to us, right? Go to a congressional hearing with me and you'll see how many of my Republican colleagues refuse to recognize what's happening to the world, what's happening to our communities. That 97%, 98%, 99% of scientists tell us something's wrong, that we've broken something. As Lieutenant Governor Hina said, Mother Earth is under attack. But I met two young ladies on the way in. Marina, correct? Yes. And Helen. And I'd like for you all to stand up real quick. If, if you haven't met these two young ladies, you're about to. And if you guys can turn around quickly as well. And if you haven't gone to their website, globalwarmingexpress.org, tonight you're going to. Here are two young ladies, and I was talking to Marina, and she... She was sharing with me, her and Helen. I, I asked her, well, how did you get involved in this? What did you, how did you get started with the Global Warming Express? And so Helen told me, well, we were listening to some speakers, and we got inspired. And, and then she said, and Marina, she, she pointed over to Marina, and Marina said, so I wrote a book. <laughs> and I, I was angry because no one was listening, and she was even uh, a little concerned because in the 2012 State of the Union, she didn't feel that President Obama talked about climate change and addressing global warming enough. So her mom told me that she's been writing to the president. She, she was about five, right? <laughs> so it's been going on for a number of years already. But I'll tell you what. If we have two young ladies, 10 years of age, yeah. Helen as well, yeah. they get this. There's no reason that every member of the United States Congress <laughs> can't <laughs> get it. <laughs> They, they have some bunch of scriptures with them that say, you walk, you rock, you bike, we like, it's far, take a car, save the earth. So I'll tell you what, here's two young ladies leading by example, and so make sure you put one of these on your car on the way home, 
but don't pull that car out unless it's far and you don't you can't take that bike or, or you can't take a walk as well. Okay. So, th there's some serious things happening amongst us today and unless we're willing to speak up and, and say something about it, it's going to continue. Um, I've learned from some great friends that are with us today. Again, Commissioner Holian to you, to Danny Mayfield, to the Santa Fe County Commission. For recognizing that we can be generating our own power with the benefits of distributed generation and rooftop solar and solar PV. And I was with Patricia, they gave me a little tour of the installation. I really want to applaud you because you've turned things around. And you did it in a way where it's not going to take away from that fire budget. You're, you're actually going to strengthen them. But we're going to be smarter about the way we're producing power. And this is something that I learned about from Randy, who was, uh, Randy Sadwick, who, who's over here somewhere, um, from uh, uh, Sandra and Steve and Craig, when I sat um, and was honored to serve on the Public Regulation Commission. When we did some things and, and we were able to work together under Governor Richardson, uh, his administration, uh, with the legislature, my father uh, was there as well. And we were able to advocate together to increase the state's renewable portfolio standard. But we didn't stop there. Because of the recognition and especially learning from Randy, the importance of what solar on homes and rooftops meant, and not only establishing a strong net metering program, which we also were able to do collectively, we put a carve out that, was, that required the utilities in New Mexico as they developed and put in place a renewable portfolio standard, that they wouldn't just have to bring in renewables, but they would have to bring in a diverse mix. So that way it wouldn't just be wind or just be solar or, or just be a geothermal or just be distributed generation, because quite honestly, we would have lost out on concentrated solar arrays. We would have lost out on distributed generation and other aspects. So we fought and we fought and we were able to put this mix into place. I say that because there's some hearings going on now that uh, probably I would ask everyone to pay attention to that may change some of that. And the New Mexico Public Regulation Commission is such an important body where things are happening every day. And we need you to keep your eye and make sure that when there's ideas that will detract from what we're doing to encourage renewable generation from coming online, detract from strong net metering programs in New Mexico that actually provide financial incentives for that homeowner, that business owner, to put that solar mix on their home that you speak up. Now, we're combating that while we're combating this notion of climate deniers, of the flat earthers, <laughs> um, as, as they've been come to know. They'll, they'll call themselves that sometimes, uh, which should alarm us, but <laughs> um, uh, anyhow. But I was with Secretary Moniz today, uh, Secretary of Energy. And the Secretary was talking about the importance of the Department of Energy now moving forward as aggressively as they can, because Congress is not acting, to put in place all that President Obama has challenged him with to combat climate change and address global warming. That's a positive thing. We're going to have an advocate in Secretary Moniz. We have to make sure that we're continuing to reach out, that we work with our local partners, that we encourage the county commission for doing what they did and encourage them to do more. That we work with the city to make sure that we can do more at the local level. That we work with our state partners as well, our state representatives and our state senators. That we encourage a governor to recognize that climate change is happening and destroying us. To look around at the devastation with fire and the drought that's upon us. The trees that we were talking about, the lieutenant governor, when he so beautifully describes, when you're in a valley with him, and he, he talks about these, this pantry that we all eat from. And he points up to the mountains. And these places that are sacred to us, where the water flows, that bring life to us. There's conifers that won't ever grow back. Not only because of the devastating fire, but because the climate has changed. We have trees that will never grow back the same way after the devastating fire up in the Pecos. Not because we won't try to plant them, but because the climate has changed. 
We can do something about it, though. And it's one person at a time. It's having the courage, like Marina and Helen, to speak up and do something about it, to bring recognition, to work and organize. And I know that I'm preaching to many, many friends and supporters here today. The work that you're doing to support Mariel, to support the efforts of organizations that keep an eye on rulemakings, on legislative deliberations, every day, means something. Because we need more eyes and ears on the ground to get this done. And so to each and every one of you for being here today, I want to applaud you. For all of my friends that have helped me better understand my responsibilities. Not only when I was elected to the Public Regulation Commission, but especially now in Congress. To speak up and to be a strong advocate. To make sure that you are asking those tough questions. And that you are building the cases necessary to be able to put in positive policy that would be able to bring around renewable generation. That would make sure that we were going to change the way that we are going to be investing dollars. And I'll just close with this. Don't let anyone try to convince you that it'll be cheaper in the future to continue to invest in the same type of fossil fuel generation that we have with electricity as we have today. Once we begin to take into consideration how these assets have been depreciated over 30 and 40 years, and you compare those costs with new concentrated solar arrays, the battery technology now that makes it fully dispatchable, in addition to what we can be doing with more distributed generation and supporting strong net metering programs, we're on par. There was a 23-year-old scientist at Sandia National Laboratories today that held up this small vial of water. And in it, floating around, were solar cells. Changing the size of what we've done with solar cell technology down to the nano level lets us put this on tape, on clothing, on just about anything you can imagine that we can harness and generate power from the sun everywhere that we are. We have to question those that are holding this back. And let's not fall into the traps as well as those that continue to hold up Solyndra as an example of why projects sometimes fail. Find out the facts when people try to demonize renewable generation and the important investments that we can be making with the United States government as well as working with local and private partners. So again, everyone, thank you so very much. Thank you for being so supportive. You can still go to the website tonight, New Energy Economy. We can give on the way out as we did on the way in. This is important work. To our host today, thanks again. And Mariel, just to, again, to you and to our advocates and those that constantly are in my ear and on, in my text messages, on my phone, uh, uh, my email, whatever it may be, thank you. thank you. Because that's what we need. We need strong advocates and strong friends, and you are both. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Lujan. Um, you can see that he's, he's a friend and an ally, and we also need to push him. And the stronger that we are, the stronger that we are, the stronger he is. Isn't that right? Um, I just want to tell you that um, we don't get any government funding, and um, we get funding from foundations and from individuals. And to the extent that it's possible, we really would like you to invest in new energy economy because an investment in new energy economy is an investment in our community. I will tell you what's on the horizon for us in the next little bit. We partnered with the county, put that solar on the Chisuke fire station. It was the very first fire station ever solarized in the county. And now we are discussing... Hi, Patricia. Now we are discussing solarizing all the fire stations in the county. So we're talking about scaling up, and that's what we need to do. And with your help, we will scale up. There's another thing. PNM is closing half of that San Juan coal plant in 2017, and we're really glad to have been part of making that happen. However, PNM is talking about replacing that power with three things, more coal, more nuclear, and natural gas. That's all fossil fuel dependency. Zero renewables. 
To me, that's unconscionable. And we will be fighting them in the PRC and hopefully making progress. And with your help, that will happen. We will not replace the closing of coal with more coal, more nuclear, and more fossil fuel dependency. We will transition to renewables. And then the last thing, um, we will implement this climate policy. If we do, it will be model climate policy that when the next Hurricane Sandy-esque event happens, we hope to be that model. If it's implemented and working here in New Mexico in an energy and ex uh, producing and exporting state, then when the next thing happens, and if there's enough of a public clamor, and that's what my job is, um, then they'll look to New Mexico and finally we will be a model and we can lead in this clean energy revolution because that's really what we need. For my daughter, um, for your daughters and sons and for your grandchildren, we need to leave them a habitable planet. The time is now. I ask you to invest in climate work. This is the most challenging also the most rewarding work that we can be doing. So thank you very much for coming, and I really appreciate your support. Thank you.